Greetings fellow learners. In this video, we are going to talk about the visual pathway, which is a path that a signal takes for visual processing from the retina to the brain. We're going to discuss different components of this, so let's get to it. Now, this here is the cross section of the eye. We took a look at most of these in the last video, so I'll defer to a lot of details there. But for now, what we want to know is that this here is the cornea and this here is the lens. And both of these together create a convex lens structure that can refract incoming light onto the retina. So if we have an object that's at some distance from the lens, these gray dashed lines represent the path of a photon. You can imagine that a photon coming from like the top of the head will be refracted somewhere over here and the bottom of the foot will be refracted over here on the retina, creating an inverted image on the retina. So let's actually take a look at this section of the retina right here, blow it up and see what's going on. So the retina is composed of six types of cells and photons. Well, this here is going to be the front of the retinal membrane. And this here is going to be the pigment epithelium, which is the back of the retina. So the photon is going to be coming from this direction and is only going to be processed by these back cells, which are photoreceptors. Now these cells in the front are not going to be activated by light. And so the light just goes to the back and then a signal is propagated in this direction. Now the cells in the back over here are known as photoreceptors. They literally detect light and they convert this light into electrical signals that are then propagated in this direction. So they do this through a process known as phototransduction. Now, there are two types of photoreceptors here. The first is the rods, and the second is the cones. And they are named because of their rod-like shape and cone-like shape, respectively. Rods are good for nighttime vision, and they do this because they have such a large surface area, which makes it easy to absorb light, and hence they activate even with very small amounts of lights hitting them. Cones, on the other hand, are used for colored vision, and they are sensitive to color in general. And there are three types of cones. We have the S cone, which can absorb blue light, we have the M cone, which can absorb green light, and the L cone, which can absorb red light. And because of this, we can process RGB information and see the world in tricolors. The rods and cones are going to now be connected to these bipolar cells. These bipolar cells will send information from the photoreceptors to the ganglion cells here. And typically bipolar cells are connected to either just rods or they're connected to just cones, but typically not both. Now there are also interneurons, that is the horizontal cells as well as the amacrine cells. So these horizontal cells, they help connect and modulate information from different photoreceptors into the bipolar cell. And these amacrine cells will modulate information from different bipolar cells to the ganglion cells. And they allow our eyes to see well or adjust well to different lighting conditions. Now, in the last layer, which is towards the front of the retina, we have these retinal ganglion cells. They are the only neurons that can transmit information via action potentials. That is, that if the ionic charge of this neuron exceeds a certain membrane threshold potential, then it will fire a signal in the form of an on or off, as opposed to all of these others which transmit information via gradient potential. So this ganglion cell is characterized by a very long axon, and these long axons become nerve fibers, which will then bundle together to form the optic nerve. 
So if you were to look at this diagram over here, you can imagine that these each of these strands over here is like a nerve fiber that's coming from a ganglion cell. And they bundle together, typically at an area or region known as the optic disc, to create the optic nerve. And it's important to know that this optic nerve here, it's a cranial nerve. So that means that it's going to transmit this information from the retina to the brain. So now that we saw the path of signal takes in the eye, let's actually look at how it goes to the brain via a nice cross section that we see over here. So in this cross sectional image, we can see that this here is like the eyes, right? This is going to be just a visual scene that the person is viewing. And this is the front of the brain. This here is the back of the brain. So let's just take a look at what's going on over here. So currently the person is processing a visual scene. These gray lines are the path of photons. So you can see that this structure over here is how the image is seen on the retina or is projected on the retina. And it's going to be inverted in both cases, as you can see here. And what's really cool here is that now the nasal side or the retinal ganglion cells that come from the nasal side of the retina are going to be crossing over onto the opposite side of the brain. And the point at which they cross over is known as the optic chiasm. And roughly we will see about like 50 to 60% of the nerve fibers cross over to the other or opposite side of the brain. Once these nerve fibers cross over, the optic nerve is now known as the optic tract. And most of the nerve fibers over here are going to go to the thalamus and specifically the part of the thalamus known as the lateral geniculate nucleus. And it is from here that this will relay information in the form of a bundle of axons known as optic radiations. And it's going to relay this information to the occipital lobe of the brain and a part of it known as the primary visual cortex or V1. So it is V1 because this is one of the first parts of the brain that actually processes visual information. And you'll notice that certain parts of, or certain neurons of this brain are going to process different orientations of image. So they would, neurons that would fire if a certain orientation or angle of the image is seen, or if there are edges that are to be detected. It also processes some amount of color and some other initial parts of a visual scene before it passes on to V2 and other parts of the brain for further processing. Quiz time. Have you been paying attention? Let's quiz you to find out. Which of the following statements is true? Rods contain rhodopsin and are highly sensitive to low-level lights, enabling night vision. B. Ganglion cells synapse directly onto photoreceptors. C. Cones are more densely packed in the fovea, providing high-resolution color vision in bright light. Or D. Ganglion cells are the only retinal cells that communicate by firing action potentials. I'll give you a few seconds to answer this question. The correct options are A, C, and D. But can you tell me why? Comment your answers down below and let's have a discussion. If you do like this video at this time and you think I deserve it, please do consider giving this video a like because it's gonna help me out a lot. Now that's gonna do it for quiz time. And before we go, let's generate a summary. In this video, we discuss the visual pathway, which is the path that a signal takes for visual processing from the retina to the brain. And so the way that it does this is first, it light or photons would pass through the cornea, is refracted by the lens, and is going to be projected onto the retina. It's kind of like what we see here, so that an inverted image is presented on the retina. But if we were to blow this part up of the retina, 
you'll see that the cells are arranged in a hierarchical fashion where light passes through all of these cells, but is mostly absorbed by the photoreceptors at the back of the retina. This then passes from the rods and cones through the bipolar cells to the ganglion cells. There are also interneurons, which are the horizontal cells and the amacrine cells, which are used for adjusting vision in different types of light. These ganglion cells have long axons, which will be the nerve fibers that bundle together to form the optic nerve. The optic nerve is a cranial nerve that's going to connect the retina to the brain. And specifically, you'll have the nasal part of these ganglion cells over here and over here that are going to cross over to different parts or the other side of the brain. And they will then go to the thalamus part of the brain, specifically the lateral geniculate nucleus. These are then going to be relayed through these bundle of axons to the primary visual cortex located in the occipital lobe of the brain. And the cells in the primary visual cortex can understand orientation, edges, color, among other parts of a visual scene. And this is then passed into the further parts of the brain, like V2, for further processing. And that's all that we have for today. So I hope with this video, you have a better idea of how visual information is initially processed by the brain. And if you do think I deserve it, please do consider giving this video a like. Stay tuned for more videos on computer vision here. And that's all for now, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.